<clears throat> Go on, Ken. You're all right. <clears throat> Look, ladies and gentlemen, it is, it is now time for John Shuttle's open house. And here is your host. And here is your host, Mr. John Shuttleworth. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hang on. It's too quick, isn't it? The fox show. Down to a slow rumble. Couldn't see what I was playing. Here. John Shuttleworth's open house. John Shuttleworth's open house. To locate my garden gate may take a little now. John Shuttleworth's open house. John Shuttleworth's open house. But once you've found it, don't walk round it. Enter run and now. For your coming I have waited And more than amplicated For as I've already stated It's John Shuttleworth's John Shuttleworth's Open House a Bit hard, man. So it's a bit sharp Never mind Thank you very much, welcome Welcome, indeed To a very, very special Open House Because it's New Year's Eve, of course Yeah, yeah. That's right it is, and uh, I don't know exactly when midnight will come because uh, my watch fell in the punch. I was stirring it, got a nice Tupperware in the kitchen. You see, as you probably appreciate, uh, when you're stirring something, certain muscles and tendons come into play, which increases the girth of your wrist. And uh, my strap, it was partially uh, perished anyway, and it just snapped, <laughs> fell in the punch. Um, as did my watch, of course. I wasn't too bothered about that. I was only 149 from a, an elf garage in the Matlock area. <laughs> but the strap was uh, cost a fiver, you know. <laughs> it's upset about that. But don't worry. I'm sure we'll know when the witching hour is here because the celebrity guests will be coming very, very soon. And they'll have precision gold watches, won't they? You know, so we'll be all right. Who's oh, coming then, Mr Shuttleworth? You might inquire. Well, I'll tell you. Miriam Stoppard, she's coming. Well, I think it was her. I met her in Texas, uh, in the county board section. And uh, I said, excuse me, are you, are you Miriam Stoppard? And she said, yes, yes, uh, definitely, you know. Man, she was smiling when she said it, you know. <laughs> a twinkle in her eye. So I'm a bit suspicious, but I've invited her anyway. Um, top, top gear's uh, Jeremy Clarkson, he's been invited also. Because I like him to take me as an ambassador, wire it around the block. <laughs> this little test drive. Because I'm a little bit concerned the clutch has been slipping. <laughs> and I like uh, Jeremy's honest view. <laughs> yeah. Also, I got a pair of jeans for Christmas from Mary, from a catalogue. Uh, it's the first pair of jeans, you know, lovely. And uh, Jeremy wears jeans, doesn't he? <laughs> We're both uh, quite long in the leg. So, you know, it'd be nice to just discuss about problems about wearing jeans. <laughs> <laughs> There are any problems, really. Anyway, I hope he'll come. This bloke called Brendan, who's a salesman that uh, works at the Daiwoo garage. It's, it's uh, Deo, isn't it? It's pronounced. That's wrong. It's Daiwoo. <laughs> isn't it? You know, I love saying that word. It forms beautiful shapes on the lips, doesn't it? Don't you try it with me now. Daiwoo. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody did. No, I think we should change it to Daiwoo. They'd sell a few more cars. I'm sure. <laughs> And um, can I just say at this stage that Ken Worthington, next door neighbour and sole agent Ken Worthington, is not invited. Oh. No, well, no, don't do that. Don't say that because he's, uh, he's in the wrong. Because without my prior knowledge, he arranged a rival party. Oh. Yeah, he did. But pff, it's going to be rubbish. <laughs> he's, no, because he's got a tiny little carrier bag with nibbles in. I saw him walking past earlier. He's got no celebrity guests coming at all. Just... Friends of his, you know, local members of the community. So uh, it'll be very poor, I'm sure. <laughs> and you must know that. But my family, they'll be here very shortly, of course. Uh, not uh, my son Darren, he's working at Victoria Wine, of course. And then he's going out with his friend Plonker. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's called Lee, really, but he says, Call me Plonker, Mr. Shuttleworth. And at first you feel a bit funny about that, but after a while it becomes very natural, you know. Uh, <laughs> Come here, Plonker, that's fine. Anyway, we'll be going to a little pub crawl in the Hathersage area, I should think. Um, but Karen, she can't come either, my daughter. That's a shame. But she's gone to a 70s uh, retro party, you know, at St Columbus Church Hall. 
Now, her platform shoes weren't high enough, in my view. So I got some one-inch ply, and I <laughs> stuck it on the bottom. And she tried to get it off, but she couldn't, because Harold Archer did it and riveted it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Brought a couple of me Dr. Rook singles. Quite like to have gone along. We told her to write it. Uh, Mary, where's she? My wife. She should be here. Well, I'll tell you where she is, probably at the moment. She's at the World of Lather. <laughs> uh, with the colleague Joan Chitty. Because uh, Joan's uh, celebrating a divorce. They've got, they've got to spend a divorce settlement, you know, by New Sofa. <laughs> but um, there's not many guests here, are there? Maybe the door needs to be open, literally, to show it's an open house. I think I'll do that. Blimey! There's loads of people in my garden. <laughs> this happened last time I had an open house. Look at night. But uh, I have to say, they're not uh, dressed very seasonally. <laughs> you all in the uh, leisure wear. Like it's, like it's summer, you know. Look at that t shirt, lad, you must be freezing. In fact, no, to be serious for a moment, if later on you do start to suffer from hypothermia, then yes, you can come in and have a little glass of punch. But hey, don't start shivering just to gain admittance. Because, because I'll know. And I'll have you escorted from the premises. All right. We need to find somebody with dark hair, don't we? That lad there. Uh, no, because you need a stranger, don't you, at midnight to come in with a lump of coal. Um, it's a good luck, isn't it? What's your name, sir? No, not you. you your hair's a bit uh, Albany. That one. <laughs> yes, you. Yeah. Simon, is it? Yeah. Where are you from, sir? <laughs> oh, sorry. I've, uh, I've just realised I've asked you those questions. I know all about him now. I'm not a stranger anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, can't use you. <laughs> sorry. Uh, we'll have to find somebody else. Let's do it later, anyway. I'll tell you what, I'm going inside because it's freezing. Hey, uh, just, just a thought. Ken Worthington might uh, approach you and ask you to come to his party to try and make up the numbers. Just say no. <laughs> right? Don't be frightened to just say no. <laughs> yeah. Oof, crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to sing a song now. This is like Band-Aid, and it's to increase uh, third world awareness. And it's also, uh, I'm going to dedicate it to the people in the garden, because... You know, they're carrying on like it's summer. I <laughs> believe it. <clears throat> do they know it's New Year's Eve? They must do, I just can't believe That there are some not quaffing ales Excited about tomorrow's sales Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> do they know it's New Year's Eve? A restful time for families Though some fools leave their cosy home To run amok with crazy foam Do they know it's New Year's Eve? It has its drawbacks, I concede It's too late to sing the holly and the ivy Too early to buy a cup price divy <laughs> Or an Easter egg Well, it's an ideal time to uh, book your summer holiday. Come on! So we know it's New Year's Eve Or is this day a time to grieve And wish this cruel world they could leave and through the pearly gates be received. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's the uh, wrong button, aren't you? <laughs> Never mind. Is that a sherry here, you know? <laughs> so. oh. Got back there in the end. Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Who can it be? Oh, it's not, Mary. Hello. Hello. How are you? I've come for the party. Have you? 
Mm. You've just come from the garden, haven't you? Yeah. You look like you have. Well, go back there then, lad. I want celebrities at my open house. No, You're I'm... not a celebrity, are you? No, I'm not. I'm just a bloke. You are? <laughs> well, you brought a bottle of, what is it? Leaf round meals. Lovely. Yes, you didn't even have a bottle of leaf round meals between them. And you brought one of your own. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I've asked you your name. Tony. Yes. What's your second name, though? Uh, Roach. Tony Roach. Tony Roach. And what do you do, lad? I'm a poet. Oh, yeah? Mm. <clears throat> That's it. We had a poet last time. I don't pronounce. Well, Tony, if you're a poet, please now show it. <laughs> Come on. That's, that's very funny. <laughs> well, no, it rhymes, Tony. That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I know the one. Go on. Okay, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, go on. Okay. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown. And Jill videoed it, for you've been framed. <laughs> Quite clever, isn't it? Yeah. Well, come in then, Tony. Oh, great. Because um, you must be freezing. I'm very cold. Yeah. This is uh, similarly clad to the people in the garden. <laughs> Tony, would you like a sherry? Or would you like uh, a coffee? Because I've got um, a cafetiere for Christmas. That's the, that's the new one, isn't it? It's even newer than cappuccino. Um, perhaps you don't know about it. You're looking a bit puzzled. But it's, it's got the plunger. Which you might think is to keep the coffee warm, but it isn't. You know, it's a mistake you'll only make once. You've got to push it down in one easy movement. But uh, coffee, no. Uh, have you got any beer? <sighs> no. No, I haven't. We had a lager, but it was uh, drunk on Christmas Eve. So I think it's going to have to be sherry, Tony. Yeah? Okay. Help yourself. Thank you. Yeah? Oh. Oof, it's quite a comical now, isn't it? It's making his opening the sherry. Tony, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from London. Oof, not very nice there, is he? <laughs> well, no, it's, the shopkeepers aren't very pleasant, are they? <laughs> but, uh, what's your favourite colour? Uh, black. Yes, thought it might be. She's, uh, <laughs> Tony's uh, bedecked in uh, very gloomy colours, you know. Those are school trousers, aren't they, you wear? <laughs> No, they're jeans. Are they? They look like uh, secondary school cotton drill trousers to me. <laughs> so I used to wear them. No, they're jeans. Are they? Oof. Well, let's not have an argument about uh, jeans. <laughs> I want to be discussing jeans with Jeremy Clarkson when he arrives. You know? <laughs> let's move on. Have you got any brothers and sisters? Uh, no. No. But I've got an uncle, if that counts. Yeah, go on. Tell um, us about it. No, he's a farmer. But he's a really terrible farmer. I see. We had to teach him this rhyme. Black sky at night, that means it's night. <laughs> Black sky in the morning, you've woken up in the night. <laughs> Don't get that. <laughs> Hello? Uh, John Shuttle's open house. Oof, don't be so stupid, John. Oh, hey, hey, it's Mary. It's my wife, Mary. Uh, where are you, love? Are you still at the World of Blood, eh? No, I'm at Ken's. Oh, Ken's? <laughs> hey, Mary, what are you doing at Ken's house? This is where the party is, love. Mm, I know, love, but uh, Joan's a bit upset. and She wants to be with friends tonight. Oh, I see. What's the matter with her, then? Well, she's bought a lovely sofa, yeah. but now she's realising she'll have no-one to sit on it with her. So she's a bit depressed, you know. Yeah. So we're going to stay here for a while, love, if that's all right. <sighs> well... <sighs> It isn't really, love. You know, I'm very disappointed that you're not seeing you. Well, why don't you come here? It's a lovely party. <laughs> Ken's put on a nice spread. Yeah. There's loads of guests. I see. Is, is Miriam Stoppard there, by any chance? Uh, I don't think so. Mm. But apparently, there's a bloke who knows Leo Sayer's brother-in-law. <laughs> Leo Sayer's brother-in-law, really? Oof. Yeah, so come round, love. Yeah. And uh, bring some tumblers with you. Because we're running out, are you? Well, yeah, I'd love to, Mary, you know, but I've got my own guests to cater for, haven't I? Oof, what guests? There's nobody there but you. You're very wide of the mark there, Mary. <laughs> you are. I'll prove it to you. Tony, make lots of party noises, as if there's lots of people. Uh, oh, on. lovely coffee. <laughs> That's, uh, oh, it's rubbish, lad. Rubbish. What's going on? Uh, it's all right, Mary, hang on. <laughs> oh, shut up, Tony. I've got a, a much better idea. Ladies and gentlemen in the garden, can you make a lot of noise, lot of cacophonous sound, like you're having a really good time? Whoa! Yeah. 
Right, that's enough. Hey, you see, what did I tell you? Oof, you can't fool me, John. That's a tape. It is, it? <laughs> it isn't, love. It is, it's a tape. Oh, no. Anyway, I better go, love, because we're about to start the conga. Uh, Mary, I want you to come back here, please, this instant. No, you come here. <sighs> right, see you soon, love. No, Mary! I think I should go. Why, Tony? Why don't you go? Everyone just arrived. I think I've come to the wrong party. <laughs> no, I don't I, think so. I was, uh, I was, think that, lad? I was meant to go to the other party. Uh, pff, oh, pff. I don't quite uh, follow your reasoning. I mean, if you're worried about doing the conga, uh, you can do it together, Tony. <laughs> you know, do you want to do it now? You can't do a conga with two people. That would just be intimate dancing. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> not a cheeky, lad. Well, all right, well, what you suggesting that we get some people from the garden in to do it? It's a nice idea, but I'm a little bit worried, Tony, that they might start making toast for themselves, you know. <laughs> or clambering up onto the workshop no, to gain no. access to, to the biscuit barrel. <laughs> that would be bad. Well, it would. Are you, uh, do you have young children, Tony? No, I've got an uncle. Yep, we know that. It's well established. <laughs> but uh, if you, when you do have children, I'm sure, well, I'm not sure, but maybe <laughs> you'll meet a lady one day who would want to have uh, children with you. And if you do, this tip will be very useful. <laughs> I'm about to dispense. If you see a toddler climb onto the worktop to, to get a, a biscuit from the biscuit barrel, what you must do is um, bang your hand very hard on the, on the worktop and go like that and say, uh, don't even think about it. All right? <laughs> now, the shock of this might cause them to tumble, lose a footing, you know. Hmm. So be ready to take your hands and put them under the armpits of the toddler. Make sure at this stage, Tony, that you don't mm -hmm. uh, tickle them. <laughs> or they're going to associate pleasant sensations with their actions, aren't they? And uh, repeat the crime. That's, that's very Have good. Have you got advice. that? Yeah. You weren't taking notes though, were you? I think I'll remember. Yeah. All right. Well, what should we do now, Tony? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to, uh, round to Cairns. Can I come? Mary. Can you come now? Yeah. I'd rather you didn't, Tony. I'd rather you stayed and um, greet any uh, stragglers, you know, any late arrivals to my party. So please stay. Um, look, if you're bored, then there's a sparograph in the sideboard. <laughs> uh, there's a few bits missing, but have a go with it, you know. I'll come back and see how you're getting on, give you a nice critique on what you've done. And, and there, there will be some more people coming. Of course there will. January Clarkson, he's due. Really? Miriam Stoppard. Well, it looked like her. Uh, the Chuckle Brothers, I mean, I don't know. Anybody, anybody could come. You don't know, do you? These things you can't predict. I'll tell you what, Tony, while I'm away, why don't you amuse the listeners and the people in the garden with some of your clever wordplay? Yeah? Do that. Okay. Tony Roach, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you in a minute. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, people in the garden. Um, and so I'd like to read out a couple of poems. This first poem is about the last nine girls I used to go out with and how they all finish with me. And it's called My Disastrous History with Women. <laughs> I could tell it was all over with Diana, just from her manner. I suspected it wasn't working with Karen when she said she'd rather sleep with Sharon. <laughs> Sheila ran off with another man. Sarah, she ran off with another man. Catherine, she ran off with another man. <laughs> Richard, she turned out to be a man. <laughs> and now I go out with Sharon Stone. Uh, she's a stone that I call Sharon <laughs> and pretend is my girlfriend. <laughs> so uh, this is another poem and it's called Cabbages. Cabbages are great, they're leafy and green, I wouldn't knock cabbages, that would be mean. Cabbages are happening, cabbages are cool, there's Lynham would be one if he was a vegetable. <laughs> you can have them cooked, you can have them raw, you can have them shredded and put into coleslaw. Yes, cabbages are nice, cabbages are pleasant, but you don't expect to get one from your dad as an 18th birthday present. <laughs> it's quite a personal one, that. I thought I'd do a happy, cheery poem now, and it's a poem about somebody beating me up. <laughs> and it's called, My Dad. 
Whenever my dad hit me, he would always try to make it up to me the next day by buying me a present. It was his way of saying sorry. One time, I remember, he bought me a mini printing kit and some stencils. And I used them to falsify documents which had him convicted as a war criminal. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers. How's this paragraph getting on? It's not, is it? No. No, never mind. No, I'll tell you what. Stay, because you know who's coming? Barbara Dixon's babysitter. Really? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, she's coming over. Uh, for, a, for a nightcap in a few minutes. We can have a little game of knockout whist. That's good with three, isn't it? Well, there'll be three. more by then, obviously. Because who knows? Um, Elton Wellsby may have decided to <laughs> drop in. As I say, you don't know. It's totally unpredictable. It's New Year's Eve, isn't it? But, um, yeah, Mary will be along as well. My wife wants you to meet her. Uh, at the moment, she's uh, looking after Joan. Joan Titty, who has uh, decided to have a bath. But she's fallen asleep. Uh, which really? is probably a bit dangerous to do that. Also, she's fully clothed, which is not very hygienic, is it, really? <laughs> I suggested that uh, she should bring her over to have a shower, because we've got a new power shower fitted. And it's got, uh, it's fantastic, 8.5 kilowatts. It's got several programmable presets for different family members. <laughs> In fact, I believe one of the presets is still available, Tony. If you want to go and have a shower. Really? Oh, it's quite nice, isn't it, though? ACDC. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you like to have a shower, Tony? Because the last uh, person who came to my open house did. Well, you know. And he took me a shower, John. That'd be lovely. Yeah. But look, it's, it's nearly midnight. It is, it? Yeah, 10 seconds. No, oh, you're joking. He's right. Let's see. Five, four, four three, two, two, one. Happy New Happy Year! Year! May all acquaintance be forgot and ever more for all the blows up be forgot for all the blows and for all you keep going that's it well they're well away in the garden I'm going to ring Ken Crazy. Hey, now I'm a conifer, lad. Now I'm a conifer. I'm going to ring Ken because um, I feel quite convivial towards him now. Excuse me. Oh, yes. Who's there? Hello. Ah, Ken. Ken, happy new year. Happy new year to you, Ken. Oh, hello, John. Are you coming round our watch? Well, no, I'd love to, Ken, but uh, I'm a little bit tied up at the moment. Uh, I'm having a party too, remember? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. How's it going? How's it going? Uh, exceptionally well, Ken, yes. How's, how's your little uh, do going? Mm, not bad, not yeah. bad. I'll pop round, John, and we'll see the new year in together. Oh, well, no, it's too late, Ken. You know, it's 1998 already. Is it, Zach? It's only five to twelve, John. Is it? No, no, it can't be. It can't be, Ken. It is, yes, it's still 1997. You watch it hey. must be fast. Oh, sorry, John, I've got to go. Yet another guest has arrived. Ooh. Oh, a bottle of lead brown milk's lovely. <laughs> That's all these people. Oh, Tony, he's uh, defected, hasn't he? What's a rotter? Yeah, he wants to celebrate New Year twice, and who can blame him? You know, it's, uh, I wish I'd thought of that myself. It's quite clever, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. You've been duped. <laughs> you know, you've gone through that emotional crescendo. Uh, all for nothing. I mean, the only consolation is that at least you get to break your New Year's resolutions. <laughs> uh, for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where's Mary? Eh? Hey, have you seen my wife? I said, hey, hey, have you seen her? She left me after a row. It was over a vacuum cleaner. I said, what's wrong with the broom? And she said, something I've seen her. Oh, Mary, please come back and I'll buy you a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, and I looked everywhere for her. At uh, the butchers, 
the bakers. Not the candlestick makers, because they don't have those anymore, do they? But uh, even put out a request on local radio. I said, hey, have you seen my wife? Come on, hey, hey, have you seen her? She left me after a row, it was over a vacuum cleaner. I said, what's wrong with the broom? And she said, something obscene. Oh, Mary, please come back and I'll buy you a vacuum cleaner. Well, she did come back and uh, I bought her second hand cylinder model, which she still has to this day. Lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, actually, she wants Electrux glider now. <laughs> <coughs> Mary. Oh. Um, Tony is uh, talking to Barbara Dixon's babysitter in Ken's garden. He's giving her a glass of leapfrog milk. No, he thinks he's really clever. Obnobby with friends of the stars. What Tony doesn't realise is that that's he's not the babysitter of Barbara Dixon, the singer. It's Dixon with an X. It's a local lady, Barbara Dixon. She runs an industrial cleaning company. Um, you know, so she's doing very well. Quite an impressive connection, really. Almost as impressive as uh, Barbara Dixon, the singer, really, isn't it? She's not been in the charts for a while. Always oh, giving her a kiss now. It's a bit forward of him, isn't it? Oh, no, we've missed it. It's New Year. First we were too early, now we're too late. Oh, I can't believe it. You must be feeling gutted, ladies and gentlemen. I am. Oh. Miriam Stoppard is getting into uh, a daiwu. Driven all out by Brandon, the salesman. Who's she with? It's a bloke in jeans. Must be uh, Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. I don't mind doing that myself. What's a way to start the new year with a test drive and a die -woo. I think uh, I'm going to join them. But that doesn't help you, does it, ladies and gentlemen? Because I'm leaving you in limbo. Uh, you know, you're going to be stuck in 1997 forever, aren't you? <laughs> Hang on. I'll tell you what. Let's see you right. Let's bring you into the new year. Here we go. I haven't got to watch, but I'll pretend. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Do they know it's New Year's Eve? They must do, I just can't believe. That there are some not quaffing ales, excited about tomorrow's sales. Do they know it's New Year's Eve? It has its drawbacks, I concede. It's too late to sing the holly and the ivy, too early to buy a cup price diary or an Easter egg. Burns time a day. Oh, oh, come on, Langs and we did it. John Shuttleworth's open house was written and performed by Graham Fellows and also featured Tony Roach. The producer was Paul Schlesinger. Gentlemen. Happy New Year to you, Tony. Happy New Year, John. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Good night. Happy New Year to you. Right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.